How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Thursday here on the program. You know what that means. we got a lot to get into here today, including AEW Dynamite last night. We have a new AEW Women's Champion. Thunder Rosa beat Britt Baker in the main event of the show. Cage match. Blood. Thumbtacks. Violence. It had it all. thought it was very well done. Nobody ran in. No interference. Just two blokettes in a cage. What would be the uh, what would be the uh, feminine of blokes? Birds? Anyway, two women in a cage beat the absolute stuff out of each other, and away we go. So we'll talk about that, as well as everything else on the Dynamite show. I thought Dynamite, excellent show. Much better than last week's show. And we'll talk about everything that happened yesterday. We've also got WWE unveiling its latest group of performance center signees. The class is headlined by, you'll never guess everybody, a wrestler. And then we got a whole bunch of athletes as well. Who, you never know, they might become good wrestlers. But in my experience, the best wrestlers were the ones who were wrestlers. But we'll get to that later. We've also got NXT viewership. And we'll talk about uh, whatever's on your mind. What is on your mind today? 425-780-7566 is the text message line. I know I mention it a lot, but don't call that line because nothing happens. But no matter how many times I say it, people still call the line. And apparently they leave messages, which I've never listened to one in my life. So don't waste your time. 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, what's your email? Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. Hey, what's your Twitter? At Brian Alvarez. Back in a moment, Observer Live. It's here, Wrestling Observer Live. Except for VV, also WrestlingObserver.com. I've been reading this chat. You mm. know what I'm going to start with today? What's that? It's too bad this isn't the Brian and Vinny show. I'll, I'll do the profanity-laden version tonight, everybody. Only at WrestlingObserver.com, video.f4wonline.com. I'm jealous. Dude, Britt Baker's awesome. Yeah, she is. And you know what? For a while now, I've been hearing a lot of criticism of Britt Baker, okay? Because uh, Britt Baker and uh, Thunder Rosa had a match together a year ago, and it was awesome. And uh, they kind of went away from the feud for a while, and then they started it back up a few months ago. And uh, don't get me wrong, they have been in the ring together of late, and there's been problems. Like, they have not gelled since that match, the Lights Out match, a year ago. And when they had these matches where things were not gelling, for whatever reason, and I think I know why, actually, it was all Britt's fault. That's all I heard. God, Britt Baker sucks. Britt Baker's overrated. All these matches are horrible. It's all Britt's fault. And I think that part of this, okay, is that her character irritates people. Because someone's always running in during her matches. It's the exact same thing they did in New Japan with the Bullet Club. Interference, 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 interference. And next thing you know, oh, Britt's overrated. She sucks. I don't want to watch her matches. I don't care about the cage match. And I'm sure some people actually believe that. But you have to separate this angle that you hate from the abilities of, of the person, okay? And I'm not saying, listen, I want to make this abundantly clear. When they, when, whatever issues that they were having when they were doing those matches together and they weren't, like, smooth, I'm not saying this was Thunder Rosa's fault, okay? Forget Thunder Rosa in this, in this, because I never really heard anyone say anything about Thunder Rosa. It was all about Brit. Brit sucks. Brit's, Brit's overrated. Blah, 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 blah. Dude, I watched that match last night. She was awesome. She was great in that match last night. They were both, I mean, they, whatever, whatever magic they didn't have, uh, the last uh, two months or whatever, bro, it was back last night. And the thing with, with Britt Baker is, like, <laughs> she, uh, you know, whenever I, whenever I talk about stuff like this, I always want to say, like, dude, she's, she's tougher than most men. But then I sort of get into that equality thing where I shouldn't even be making that comparison. That, like, 
you know, she's a woman who's as tough or tougher than most men. Like, if we're going to do this whole equality thing, I've talked about this before. If you're, whether you're a man or a woman, if your match sucks, I'm going to tell you your match sucks. And if your match is good, I'm going to tell you your match is good. For some reason, a lot of fans want equality, but they also want the women's matches, like, graded on some sort of curve or something. like That's not equality, okay? A sucky match sucks whether it's a, a man or a woman, okay? So I'm not even going to use the term, she's tougher than, like, most men. She's just so tough. I don't know if you guys know this about Britt Baker or not. I should be her manager at this point. You guys know how many injuries that she's suffered? Dude, she's broken, like, every bone in her body over the last couple of years. And every time she gets an injury, she just barrels on through it. And you guys notice she still has that gimmick on her wrist? She still has that thing on her wrist. Do you know how long ago she broke her wrist? Months ago! And I remember at the time I thought, bro, like, I don't know if you necessarily need to drop the title, but she needs to stop wrestling. Because, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but she's a DMD, she's a dentist. You know what dentists work with? They don't, they don't go in your mouth with their feet! They use their hands! And so... A, a wrist that's not healing for a dentist? Bro, but you know what? That thing's been, that cast has been, I don't know if it's healed properly or improperly or if maybe even now it's a gimmick, I don't even know, but they never call attention to it, so I don't think it's a gimmick. But she's in there and she works and she gets slammed on chairs and she bumps on thumbtacks and like Ric Flair said back in the 90s, she cut herself six times! She's bleeding all over the place! She's got tacks coming out of her back, falling on the... She made her own contraption to die on. So anyway, bro, I don't want to hear it. I do not want to hear that Britt Baker sucks. If you think she sucks, go away. Go listen to another show. Or better yet, start your own podcast. Go do your own podcast and tell me how much Britt Baker sucks. Because you know what? I ain't going to listen to it. Am I wrong? Dude, she was awesome in that match last night. Brian? Am I the only one? Brian. What? Calm down. That's um, my gimmick is not to be calm, Mike. I, I know, I know, but you need to... No. I think for some of us, yes, you do. For I'm some of the audience... I'm calm in my real life. On this show, I gotta get it out. Otherwise, I start going nuts talking to my kids about uh, the... You know, when you go further north, the length of the days... Don't even get first, me started on what I did yesterday. I say, first of all, you're not calm in your real life, and there's proof of that. And two, I think maybe you need to explain to some people, like maybe me, who aren't, I'm obviously not sharing your timeline of people that have been bagging on Britt Bro, Baker. may I? It's actually not even my timeline. I was hearing this on our own Twitch chat, which I put over as the smartest group of people of all of the people that like, you know, we got Twitter and the YouTube chat. Twitch is like on the upper tier. I heard it from these people. I, you, Sickened. You, Goons. You got me. DJ's in here saying right now, saying a lot of people have turned on Brett as of yep. late. I don't, I don't know. I said she, the year she won most improved, I said, ah, I don't know about that. And people attacked me as if, you know, they were wearing the white hats and capes and they flew in because they had to defend Brett. I've been always been a big, big Brett Baker fan. She just doesn't have a ton of experience. Like, that's the only thing you can say about Bit Breaker. She looks like a star. She's in shape. She Her ring and ring work is getting better. She knows how to carry her. I mean, the whole package, like, she's a star. I, I don't I don't see where people have complained. I've I've heard people complain about Thunder Rosa, and I will admit this. I'm the biggest Thunder Rosa fan in the world. I think Rosa is somebody who can be a crossover Main, you know, a mainstream crossover commercial star of some magnitude. I can see her doing commercials. I can see her because she is in the community already. There are things where I think Thunder Rosa can be a little bit bigger than wrestling. Not The Rock, but she can be bigger than wrestling, which is going to be good for AEW. And I've seen her be inconsistent at times in the ring. You know, she hasn't been perfect. But I still think she's great overall. And I think the combination of the two, again... Is it magical every time out? Is it perfect? No, but I have not I have not seen or I have been very lucky then to avoid all of these people that have downed both of these women, and especially Britt Baker, apparently all of a sudden for things that are out of her control. If this is about Jamie Hayter and and Rebel running in, 
that's got nothing to do with her. That's got something to do with the booking. So you can bash that, but that's got nothing to do with Britt Baker. And I mean, as far as her blading and her intacts, and we've seen from both of these women already, they are the toughest of the tough. And Brian, you ask any woman in the world, they it can, could a man give birth? And they no, will all are say, you kidding me? Hell no. You try pushing a watermelon I out of a, there yeah, in a it, birth center. I, I was there too. Oh. And, Almost passed out. That's a whole different well, story. Well, I'm tougher than you, but it was Well, I still... didn't pass out. But that's one of the things they were yelling at me. They, When I was in there, and I don't know if they did this for you or not, when I was actually in that room, the woman came in, are you going to be in here? Yes. Are you going to pass out? Are you going to be okay? Okay. Yeah. The nurse came in a little while later, said the same thing, almost looking at me like pissed off about it. And the reason why is because every guy says they're tough enough to handle it. Then it starts to happen and then they pass out. They don't want to deal with you. They're trying to deal with your woman who's given birth. So, yes, I will say no matter what, I don't know how we got on this conversation. I don't either. Britt Baker is a bad B. Thunder Rosa, a bad B. And anybody out there bashing them or thinking that their matches aren't any good or that they're not over or that it's over for them. Get the hell out of here. Hey, did you know there was a Dynamite show last night, everybody? There was also a Rampage taping, but I got an email from a long, long-time listener, so I don't want to bury this guy, but he got really mad at me when I went over the lineup because of my oh. tone of voice. And oh, so I'm not, I'm not going to do it this year. You know what I'm going to do? I know what I'm going to do. Let me do it. No. Somebody find me one of, the, uh, one of those things where you type in the words on the computer and then it says it. So we can get a monotone computer voice to read the, the, the lineup. Speak and spell gimmick? Yeah. Whatever it is. Somebody send me a link to that. I'll do it after the break so we can get the, the rampage lineup out there. Because <laughs> I am a man of the people. I know some of you don't think that, but I am. All people. Back in a moment. Observer Live. All right. We're going to do this dynamite report. And then we'll get into the, uh, the rampage. Rampage tapings. No spoilers. Okay. All right. Uh, I thought the show was really good. Am I the only one? So it opened up with a great six-man tag, which was uh, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Hangman Page against Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish. Every big, crazy, nutty move in the book. Double springboard, double doomsday device, all sorts of crazy stuff. But in the end, the Jungle Boy, he ended up in the ring by himself. Hilo from Red Dragon. Cole hit the boom, and they pinned him. So it looks like Red Dragon is going to be match. in line for the tag team titles, and they 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 strongly suggested it's going to be Cole versus Adam Page again. And uh, later in the show, they mentioned there's another Battle of the Belts coming up. I forget the date, but I would expect that, uh, that it's going to happen there. We had a uh, video of Chris Statlander taking her makeup off, so I think she's getting a new gimmick. We had John Moxley and Brian Danielson versus Chuck Taylor and Wheeler Yuta. Yes, I realize they gave Wheeler Yuta and Chuck Taylor some stuff, especially Wheeler Yuta. But they beat the absolute hell out of these two dudes. Brian Danielson, I don't know if this is like actually him or if it's just like a great character, but he's the most sadistic guy I ever saw in wrestling. He is so full of unrepented joy at absolutely slaughtering these poor nerds and they kill these guys, and they submitted poor Wheeler. Yuta almost tore his head off. And then as they're leaving, Yuta's halfway up the ramp, and he's like, bro, I got I got my ass handed to me. I'm learning from the wrong blokes. And he turns around, and he goes back to the ring, and Regal's in the ring, and he, he offers a handshake, and Regal just slaps him across the face, and sadistic Brian Danielson starts laughing. You never saw a guy laugh so hard. And poor Wheeler Yuta is shunned. Now he's going to be shunned by two groups. So he's really going to have to work his ass off to get in this group with uh, Regal, Moxley, and Brian Danielson. The FBMFs, the name of the team, according to me. Can you imagine them bringing in Minoru Suzuki as a guest trainer one day down the line? You notice something about Minoru Suzuki and Daniel Bryan? Because you remember that wacky AM show they had where he's like wrestling with a bear or whatever, and he's doing all this wacky stuff, and he looked like Ed Grimley. And you see him do all these crazy things, just like Minoru Suzuki. You know, he's riding down to the ring on a bicycle. He's doing this. He's doing that. Yet nobody says anything. Nobody says, look at those garbage guys. Look at those guys doing all that comedy. They're ruining everything. You know why? Because they'll kill you and that's the amazing part about this brian danielson character right now is the fact that at any moment just like that 
He could just turn around and kill you. John Moxley wants to look around and, and breathe heavy and act crazy, and I'm busting through things, and look at me. I'm nuts. I'm crazy. The craziest people never have to do that sort of thing. All right. Don't make me miss another break. FTR backstage. They strongly hinted the best there is could be coming in as their manager. And don't forget, we've got an Owen Hart Cup coming up. We had a Jericho Appreciation Society. I'll go into full detail on this one tonight. But it is exactly as we said it was, which is Chris Jericho is a WWE sports entertainer. That is his heel gimmick in AEW. And when he said, I'm not our, we're not wrestlers, we're sports entertainers. These people booed this guy unmercifully. They don't want to see a sports entertainer. Nosferatu of pro wrestling. They've changed the name of 2.0. I'll never remember Matt something Daddy other. Matt. Jeff. Daddy. Yeah, we should use those gimmick names instead. Cool hand Ange. Yeah. So uh anyway, uh this was this was great. This this gimmick is money. And we had Scorpio Sky beating Wardlow. Of course y'all know what happened. Referee distracted, MGF comes out, he posts Wardlow, Scorpio Sky hits his finish, pins him. Everybody's beaten down Wardlow afterwards. And uh, they hit him with a chair shot. They hit him with the diamond ring. So, obviously, Wardlow has to go through Spears. And then Wardlow will ultimately get to MJF. Exactly what you would expect. And exactly what they should have done here in this match. Hardys versus Private Party. I thought it was fine. I wouldn't say it was great. It was a, uh, you know, when the Hardys go out in the Indies and they just do some some match with some local team. That's essentially what this is. The fans, bro, they didn't care one bit about seeing a match. They wanted to see the Hardys do their greatest hits. And every time they did one of their spots, they went crazy. Jeff tagged in, did his, you know, clothesline comeback. They're going nuts. Private party gets the heat. Don't care. So the Hardys hit the uh, senton. Everyone went crazy. They won. And then uh, Andrade's uh, family office uh, came down to destroy them, but Sting and Darby Allen came out to even the odds. So clearly, we have got a a multi man match, eight man tag coming up. Matt then, in that shirt. Ugh. Then, as noted, the main event of the show it was Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker for the championship in a cage. And it's very clever because Britt comes out without uh, Jamie Hayter and uh, and Rebel. And they're doing the match, and and uh, early on when they're just wrestling, like the crowd was kind of quiet. But once he started busting out those gimmicks, holy smokes, this 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 crowd went nuts. So the referee takes his bump, and Audrey has to come down to replace the referee, and the doors wide open, and I'm sure everybody, you know who you are. They're like, oh, there's going to be interference in a cage match. God, it's just like WWE. I hate this show. I'm never watching. No one ran in. The door shut and locked. But they made you think they were going to kill the gimmick, and then they didn't. We had an air raid crash off the middle rope through chairs. We had bumps onto thumbtacks. Britt Baker built the Empire State Building, and then she fell on it and crashed to the ground. And finally, the Thunder Fire Driver into the tax. Clean win by Thunder Rosa in her hometown on her birthday. And confetti fell from the sky and people were crying. Rosa was in tears. I mean, dude, yes, I know it was irritating the way they, the way they built it up. But they built it up that way for a reason. To build to a cage match where there's no way in and there's no way out. And since Britt Baker's friends can't help her, it's a fair fight, and she gets beaten clean in the middle of the ring in the woman's hometown. God, anything else you want to complain about, you geeks? Well, I know what you'd complain about. The way I read the spoilers for the next show. Therefore, I've enlisted the help of Fauntleroy. Guys never thought you'd hear Fauntleroy, did you? Mm. He's a little feminine. But here is the lineup for AEW Rampage. On Friday night. No spoilers. First match, Darby Allen versus The Butcher. Second match, Layla Hirsch versus Red Velvet. Third match, House of Black versus Bear Country and Fuego del Sol. Main event, Keith Lee versus Max Caster. No spoilers. <laughs> she may have gotten into my supply there. It's... Uh... Please, Mike. There you go. 
That is how we are going to do the lineup for Rampage every week. Thank because you, Paul. Because I Roy. do not, I do not, I don't want people knowing who's going to win based on how I say the matches. You know what's funny about that, by the way? Oh, and my I, God. I, this is really no, a listen, complaint from people. No, I swear to God this is true. No one's going to believe me, but I swear this is true. Some of you might actually believe me. We do this show at, uh, we're doing Rampage spoilers at 2.30 a.m. in the morning, okay? So I finish the Dynamite report, and I say, Dave, take us to Rampage. And, bro, I don't remember a word this guy says. <laughs> like, I have no idea who wins any of these matches. I can look at it, and I think I know who wins every match. But honest to God, when I read those with that lineup in the way that I, I used to, not anymore, now I got Fauntleroy, I honestly, I didn't know who won the matches. I mean, I knew because it's obvious, but I didn't actually know. So anyway. Have you at any point drifted off like he's going through No, but you know what's funny? He's going through something and you like forget. Like, Hold on. I'm going to tell you this because I want to make sure we have time. I have never fallen asleep during Observer Radio. Okay? Never. It's professional. That's good. But. <laughs> but. Dave has. Oh, you never heard it? Because I edited it off the show. There have been a few occasions where, like, there's a mailbag question, and it's just, it's usually a mailbag historical question at the end of the show at 2.30 a.m., and he starts talking about whatever, you know, history thing he's talking about. He's going back 60 years or whatever. And then all of a sudden, he's, like, talking about the WrestleMania main event with Seth and, and whatever. And uh, the first time it happened, I thought, oh, my God, this guy, like, you know, he had a stroke. But then it turned out, no, he was so tired that, like, he essentially kind of half fell asleep talking. And then, you know, his brain was just, it moved to another thing that he knew about. This has not happened many times. It actually hasn't happened in, in uh, probably about two years now. Yeah, but 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 you... for a while there, and I just went back and I edited the question off the show so, like, nobody would, like, freak out that, you know, something was horribly wrong. Well, I'm sure somebody's thinking you're making this story up. But as no. you know, as you know, uh, during Sin Lamente... And again, at times where we were recording at literally three o'clock in the morning Pacific time, there had been times after UFCs and all that stuff, it actually happened on those yeah. shows and, and they were edited off as well. Dude, so. it's not it's not burying Dave. It's what no, it's, happened. He the sleep. guy doesn't sleep and we're doing no. a show at two thirty in the morning. What do you expect to happen? He sleeps less. Th I mean, I barely sleep and I have a bizarre schedule and there are weekends and times. At, and again, not to bash his age. But he's significantly older than either one well, of us. That don't matter. Vince don't sleep either. He's 76. But I'm saying, though, but a lot of people can't do that. They tire as they get older. But it shows you the shape he's also kept himself in and the gas he has because there are days he's up like 21 hours. Now, I will, get... I will bury Dave over this. I remember one time he came over to my house and uh, it was really late. And I said, dude, let's go record the show. He goes, no, let's watch SmackDown first. I said, bro, it's like 1230. Let's go to the show. No, let's do SmackDown first. I was like, ah. Turn on SmackDown, he was asleep in five minutes. <laughs> Back in It'll a moment, Observer Live. Sorry about Dave falling asleep without being considered a burial. Oh, is that what people are saying now? Hey, you want me to tell you stupid stories about me? I could go on all day. You could. If there's 365 <laughs> days in a year, 200 of those days I wake up to text from Lance Storm telling me how stupid I am. Well, how about the other day? You know what I have on my door? What's that? I have that lock where you use your fingerprint to get in. Uh huh. Because I'm filthy rich. That's all I get uh -huh. in my house, fingerprint. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the other day, this, this damn just, thing. Just remember that. You're going to lose that digit one day when somebody's like, I want to try to break oh, into better. stuff. Yeah. So the uh, thing starts beeping. And I was like, what is this thing beeping for? And it wasn't the battery. It just was randomly beeping. And so I'm sitting there, and it's just beeping. And I'm so irritated. that I was like, God, I'm just going to turn this stupid thing off because it keeps beeping. So I shut it off and... Uh, and it kept beeping. And I was like, God, anything else? So I, anyway, I just went back and I was watching my show or whatever. So the next day we, uh, you know, we're walking Paisley to school. And we uh, go out the garage, shut the garage door, walk her to school. And uh, we're on the way back and I realized I shut the door lock off. And I don't have a garage door opener in my pocket. So I locked myself out of my own house. I had no way to get in. Then I'm furious. 
I locked myself out of my house. How do I get in here? So I look up the, I go on the app and I'm reading the manual. And then the manual goes, well, you know, if you get a, 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 a battery, you can uh, do some gimmick with the battery in the front and then you type in some code and it'll open the door. And I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll just run to the store and get a battery. No problem. Well, I can't get into my car in the garage. <laughs> now I'm really mad. God, I got to walk miles to the store to oh, get a geez. battery to come back to get into my own house because I shut the stupid door. I'm so mad. And all of a sudden I realized, well, I was on the app. So I opened the door with the app. <laughs> you know how much time I wasted that day? You got your cardio in, though. No, I didn't. I was standing outside the front door getting angry. I didn't burn that many calories. Well, I thought you were you, miles. You had to walk miles. No, I was thinking I snow. had to. I didn't actually do <laughs> it. I was just so mad thinking about what I was going to have to do. I didn't do now, it. Now, how does, wait, if you're out on the road or you're somewhere, then how does everybody else get into the house then? How do they, do they have some They all have gimmick? fingers. So, okay, so there's, mul so there's multiple. Yes. Okay. Multiple fingers can get into my door. Like that? How about that one? You're Can a that horrible, get in your door? horrible person. So anyway, if you want, I could go on for hours about stupid stuff I've done. But Lord forbid I mention that Dave fell asleep talking about some Bruno San Martino championship title defense from 1967. Bro, it's nature. It's fact. People want to get upset about, like, factual things, and it's. I'm sorry. It's just it's happened. These things happen. Has it, have, have people not fallen asleep at work? If they've been there for long shifts, you've had to work a 24-hour shift, 19 hours, whatever it is, it happens. These things occur just because it's pro wrestling, just because it's Dave Meltzer doesn't make him doesn't make him any you know more special than anybody else or any less special, whatever it would be. Let's do the deal here. Four two five seven eight zero seven five six six is the text message line. All right, this person here says AEW is already near perfect, but William Regal with his sons have made the promotion. That much better. I absolutely love how they made Wheeler Yuta in a loss last night. Oh, they haven't even started making this guy. Well, they did start. Why is Mike on the phone? Hmm. I just wanted to call the text message line to see if you'd actually pick up or have a reaction to it. You know what happens when there's no news? This. <laughs> you got more Dave stories? Jeff Hardy is incapable of getting a cold reaction in an arena, abused by bad booking for years and kept under a certain level, yet he has stayed one of the most consistently over wrestlers of all time, incredibly gifted. Well, he's a charismatic bloke. Yeah. He knows how to connect to the people. That's the most important thing about being a wrestler is being able to connect with the people. And that dude connects with the people. Boogie Woogie Man Jimmy Valiant said that on Monday. It's the most important thing you can do, that connection that you have. And it's just, some people have it and some people don't. There, It can be explained by some and, and others. It just, you don't know. You just shrug your shoulders and, and ask why. And I think for a lot of people, maybe even, you know, but we talked about it earlier, Thunder Rosa, I think, maybe like that for a lot of people, that they see something that maybe others don't. But like Jeff Hardy, some people early on really saw it with him and, and really got it with him. And then the, the train just rolled on. And those WWE fans have made him... I mean, it's, again, far far bigger than what they ever wanted him to be, what they ever expected him to be, what they ever hoped he would be in WWF, in WWE. I mean, my God, just a monster of a career. Unbelievable connections. You know, I when they first started calling him the Charismatic Enigma, God, I hated that name. Same here, but it's it was true. Like, this guy's supposed to be a babyface, and, and he's, he's calling himself Charismatic. That's like calling yourself beautiful Brian Alvarez and thinking it's a babyface gimmick. Exactly. It's obviously a, a heel gimmick. But uh, as someone noted here, it's uh, it's exactly correct. Like, there's no better nickname, I don't think, for anybody in wrestling than he is a charismatic enigma. And he has yeah. been his entire career. And, I mean, what a Lazarus. I, and just, look, a lot of his problems have been self-caused. He's had a lot of the, you know, people have well noted on those things. But it, it like it something about his personality. Again, there's obviously, you know, some sides there where he opens some dark doors, you know, and we all have those parts in our personality, but the his resilience, the fact that you would never 
you know, he hasn't had a massive public crowd. I mean, there have been big moments, but, I mean, as far as, I don't know, anything that has made him too embarrassed or made fans, like, he's done nothing to have any of his fans turn on him. Nothing. And it's it's amazing. It's just, in fact, it's just grown and grown and grown. And people do want to see. I don't know what the plan for the Hardys is because I don't know, you know, them in this era with some of these teams they're going up against. But, my God, I mean, they could be the new Rock and Roll Express. I mean, Ricky and Robert, this is going to be their last year touring. Uh, although, yeah. my God. I'll although, believe it when I see it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, I mean, with Ricky Morton, I mean, they're so booked up. They're going to need another, you know, year of this retirement tour to keep it going. But once that finally happens, man, if they can just hold it together physically, Jeff and Matt will be doing the same thing for 20 years. This person says, Wheeler Yuta is a good start for the Violent Sons Club. But now Moxie needs to go and rescue Shota Umino from Revolution Pro to complete. I've heard so many great <sighs> ideas on this show today. Dude, shooter. He, he, uh... Yeah, he probably needs to get out of ref. Bro. <laughs> Just shake it up a little bit. I'd like to really like to see him in strong. This person says, "Who is more annoying as a couple, Carmella and Corey, or Sammy and Ty?" I say Sammy and Ty. Bro, this is Sammy horrible. And Ty. Horrible. Sammy and Ty. Actually, the answer is uh, Carmella and Corey because they're the only two I ever see do anything. Oh, I don't stop. go on social media. Bro, Let's they're all over the show. They're hugging each other. It's part of an angle right now. Carmella's well, saying thing. when she part wins the, the titles, they're going to have a live sex show in the middle of WrestleMania. I never see anything Sammy and Ty are doing. I'm not there on the social media looking at what Dude, they're doing. Look, I'm not, I don't follow either one of them, and I got a pretty well-curated timeline, but they have been, I guess, so relentless about... I guess just putting up pictures of themselves and young love, and then it's young, obnoxious love, and then apparently it's young, obnoxious, gotten to love with people making comments about them, about stuff that they're putting up on Twitter and IG and stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, I can dance away from all of it and be fine, but I, it certainly seems like Ty and, and Sammy have a real-life kind of go-away heat to some of this stuff, whereas Corey and Carmella, I mean, there's a level of cheese that's all across it because they're hamming it up so much. I might have something, uh, something fun here coming up. I don't know why this person sent it to the text message line because there's like thousands of these I've never read, but <laughs> thankfully I saw this one. So we're gonna check this out. Uh, we're gonna check this out after I vet it. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Thunder Rosa seems like she has a lower back injury. Your thoughts, Brian? Her punches, how she is moving, and appears like she's hurt. Dave uh, wrote that she was injured, and then uh, everyone denied that she was injured. And uh, I watched that match, and I think she's injured. So. Yeah. I think that most likely probably can't be that serious an injury because my, my my guess is she probably hasn't told anyone she was injured. So I don't know how Dave heard she was injured, but uh, I think she's injured. Well, there's been a lot match. of there's been a lot of hullabaloo coming from you know people who are signed by you know or, or rumors of you know even though they allow everybody to do what they're going to do as part of their contracts that. I, and maybe AEW doesn't necessarily love the schedules that everybody keeps, and I'm sure they would love to see, especially some of their bigger stars, not do so much in, in so many places or for certain places. And again, those are all just rumors and things like that, but they're all completely believable if you're on AEW side of things where it's like, do I want to see this woman work, you know? Four weekends a month, you know, double shots Friday and Saturday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and put her body on the line when we have so much invested in her. And, you know, if that is the case, it's a natural thing because she has looked. Again, it's maybe part of some of the inconsistencies and the fact she hasn't looked super duper sharp at times is uh, maybe a lot to do with the fact that she is lingering with injuries. Everybody is. So it wouldn't shock me at all if that's the case. This person wants more Fauntleroy. Well, you'll get him. Uh, you gotta space it out. You can't but, yeah, what do you want me to do? Just, you know, have him be a co-host? No. You can't just... It's my show. Gotta slowly don't don't make me hate Fauntleroy the way I hate Oreo the Orca. After that one day, he stole yeah, t- literally all of my thunder. Tease Fauntleroy a little bit. Just get him motivated. Scorpio get Sky versus Wardlow was utter nonsense. I don't think they should have beaten Wardlow. Oh, come on, guys. Stop. Look, without that deal, is he back on a personal services contract? Because he won and had that shot 
But does he have any other shot through AEW? And I know he's a wrestler, there's whatever you can do, but are they going to build that back into the story a little bit of MJF not only beating his ass, but also saying, guess what? You're still working for me, and I still have control over you. This person here says, uh, will Vince complain about Britt versus Rosa? Hopefully Vince didn't watch Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker's version of gory self-mutilation, or he might be on his way to file a complaint to the Toronto Star so they can print it as a damning article. Bro, there's nothing funnier. Maybe that uh, stuff about, uh, you know, WWE using the Observer's note that AW won 18 to 49 no, head-to-head. The to gore was it. much funnier, dude. Uh, no, it, it, listen, you guys realize that Madison Square Garden was two weeks ago and there was blood at Madison Square Garden? But do you realize that when they did it, they hard weighed each other? They just, like, hit each other as hard as possible to bust each other open? And Britt just bladed. But one is gory self-mutilation. <laughs> And the other is sports entertainment. So stupid. Because he's a hypocrite! So dumb. Mm. What else do we have here? Oh, this person here says, Sammy and Ty are a thing. Didn't Sammy propose on TV to his real girlfriend not that long ago? Someone here is also not on social media. No, they are uh, they are no longer together. Well, look, th- look, this is what happens when you propose to your girlfriend on national television, and then you know, then all of a sudden you're showing up, you know, with two handfuls of your girlfriend in IG posts and whatnot, and it's like, hey, there are some people that go that don't follow this stuff that go, hey, what happened here? So it's a legitimate question. I mean, it was the same thing in some ways with uh with Garza. Remember that when they did that deal, he proposed to his girl on NXT, then all of a sudden he's ripping his pants off and Chippendales ended up on the uh, main roster. Same deal. Sort of. <laughs> somebody somebody uh, texted me, bump. That doesn't move your text higher. It just says bump. Back in a moment, Observer Live. All right, which you geek sent me this? Yes, hello there, that was new, very nice, very evil, very famous, you know this. This is to Brian Alvarez from George, I think. George, George, Brian George Allen, Fink. You? All right, just want you to give Brian a pep talk. He seems to always lose arguments versus his Uncle Dave. <laughs> All right, well, that seems like a bad time. Tell him to keep his head off and never give you. up. He has to do it for Oreo the Orcha or King Orcha. All right, well, do whatever you want. Wait, from that, that, that whale that Dan has had an interview with. More about Brian. He has a radio show. Oh, so did that whale. Eh, give me so did that whale. Stars. Okay, well, Dan Housen wishes you the best of luck on your arguments with this whale and your uncle. And uh, give Dan Housen all the stars. Because he deserves them. Also, send money. Send many monies. Sound pretty good? Good. May your enemies be cast. Good luck, Brian. I'm going to break this guy's arm next. Man. George Fink? Was that the guy's name? <laughs> Who is that painted waif? Is that what William Regal asked last night? <laughs> he said. <laughs> I think so. That makes yeah. me feel better. <laughs> hey, you know, we got oh, cameos man. as well. St. Patrick's Day cameos, everybody. F4W online. Bro, they're only thirty-five dollars. When there I found go, out bro. Dan Howardson was charging ninety-five, bro, they ain't gonna be thirty-five for long. So you better get them now while you can at this price. Ninety-five. Ninety-five dollars. Good damn. Damn, thirty-five is a deal. It is, dude. It's a steal. So I've been strongly considering bumping it up to fifty. So don't miss out, everybody. Hey, we're out of time. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. Mike, as always, callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. Wrestling Observer Live.